Welcome to Ion Paulsboro. This week's program comes to you on site here at the Solvay plant in West Stefford. Uh, Irma Stevenson is not with me. You know, this is only one of maybe two or three shows a year that we do without Irma. Uh, she is in Florida. So um, I, I, I'm sure she's missing the snow and missing the weather. But as we tape the show today, the temperature's up to 40 degrees and nature continues to unfold as nature always does. So uh, we hope you'll uh, enjoy this program. Uh, we follow this program the night after a uh, council meeting was held at the high school, had a good turnout of citizens, a good panel discussion on the issue of the water, uh, municipal water in Paulsburg and the surrounding areas. And we're going to have a few of those guests on it today that were at that program. So if you couldn't make it, you hear from them directly. And we're very pleased to be here at Solve and we appreciate their participation. We'll have a guest from the DEP on, as well as our municipal water engineer. And then the chief of police is going to join us to talk about a few things taking place in town as well. So stay with us. We're coming right back. Multi-policy discount. Paperless discount. Paid in full discount. Homeowners discount. Safe driver discount. Chipmunk family reunion. Someone stole the nuts. Squirrel jail. Justice. Countless discounts. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. Thinking about a new appliance or an LCD TV? Don't think twice, think Weiss. Weiss True Value has a full line of LCD TVs plus a great variety of appliances. And of course, hardware items like True Test Paints, Master Mechanic Tools, Electrical Supplies, Key Duplicating, and Rug Doctor Rentals. And for repairs on screens and windows, look no further. Weiss True Value, from making keys to selling appliances and LCD TVs. Don't think twice, think Weiss. 39 West Broad Street, Paulsboro. For everything, there's a season, and a time for everything under heaven. A time for sharing, a time for caring, a time for remembering, and a time for parting. When that time arrives, let Beth McBride Foley and Thomas D. Foley at the McBride Foley Funeral Home help you in your time of need. Offering a wide variety of funeral services from cremation to traditional, McBride Foley Funeral Home has been helping families with the loss of a loved one with over 50 years of combined service. McBride Foley Funeral Home, 228 West Broad Street, Paulsboro. And welcome back. With me now is Jeff Pass. Uh, he is the plant manager here at Solvay, uh, located in West Stefford, uh, bordering Paulsboro. Of course, they've been, they've been in the discussion recently because of municipal water issues that they're working very hard to correct uh, to the favor of making sure the issue is, uh, is, is taken care of. Uh, we thought we'd visit, uh, and they were very kind enough to have us in. You remember, corporate America has to go through a lot of levels to do things. So the fact that uh, they're here with us and having us here today is, I think, very helpful because communications is everything. So first of all, Jeff, welcome. You're a plant manager. Now you're on television. Now you're doing public meetings with 200 people. Uh, I, thought, I thought that meeting went very well. Uh, some people had trouble hearing, but that's just because they, they were in the back of the room. So uh, to start at the beginning, I've lived here a very long time. I remember this plant, I guess, opened as Penwalt. It was a, it was, were they first in Penwalt? And it's, it's changed a couple times over the years. It's my first time here. This is a pretty large installation. Yeah, well, first I want to say thank you for having Salve on today to to give us, you know, another opportunity to kind of tell our side of the, the uh the the story and 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 kind of let you know what's going on behind the scenes because there is a lot of activity that's going on behind the scenes and also to give us a chance to tell you who Solve is yep. we have a long rich history in this community and I think that uh, it's worth it's worth telling first of all Solve is uh, made up of 150 employees all of which or many of which live in the community surrounding our plant including Paulsboro one thing about Solve is we are committed to sustainable chemistry and what that means is we're committed to reducing our footprint, which means our environmental footprint as well. And I think that that kind of frames the actions that we've taken recently with regards to some of the concerns in well number seven and in general in our community. Uh, first, let me tell you a little bit about what we do here in, in Solve. We manufacture plastics, not just any plastics, but high-tech plastics made predominantly from fluorine chemistry. And, and what's special about fluorine chemistry is that it's very durable, very reliable. So it's used a lot in applications that require long durability, uh, resistance to chemi chemicals from the environment, resistance to sunlight, resistance to heat. So a lot of the, what we manufacture for goes into automotive applications, uh, construction, um, architectural coatings. It goes into uh, alternative energies, such as solar panels. Uh, so we manufacture into a lot of different industries from this plant. Uh, 
We've had a very rich history in this community. We've been here 30 years. We certainly like to be here many, many more years to come. That's why you know our values are important to us. Uh, let me give you a little bit of history. First, Penwall did build this plant over 30 years ago in 1982. They built the plant as you see it today. Started up in 1985, and uh, in 1990 they sold to Aussiemont USA. Aussiemont operated this plant until 2002 when Solve Selexis purchased it. And then in 2011, Solve Selexis became Solve Specialty Polymers, and 2011 is when I took over as plant manager at this site. So, you know, that's, that's the history. And I want to tell you that this plant site is also very active in our community. I can tell you that uh, for the last two years, we've engaged with other manufacturer employees in West Effort, Coim, Johnson Matthey, um, and our employees and their employees work together to refurbish a, uh, a, a, uh, a park, a Field of Dreams. Many of you may know that. It was a park that was built 20 years ago by the uh, West Effort Junior Women's League, and I think that it was a community project. Well, the, the park had fallen into disrepair. We refurbished that park. We, uh, it was an employee engagement. We worked on weekends, so it was a very good project. Last year, our employees worked again together to refurbish the uh, Riverwinds Community Center. Some of the landscaping had fallen into disrepair, so we did a lot of work there. Community involvement is very important to our plant, so that certainly uh, kind of helped explain some of the activity we've taken recently with regards to well number seven. So, you know, I guess we should just get into to the issue at hand. Yeah, and it, it, it's helpful, and, and I had suggested that uh, Jeff give a general overview of Solve because many people just don't know. We, you ride by, you see the sign, and it's just a passing thought, and now suddenly you see a headline. And, you know, I like to remind people that neighbors work here, and, and you know, solving these issues takes a coordinated effort. And, and we're appreciative that uh, we're here. And, uh, and Solve, in fact, is engaged with our municipality and a DEP to get this fixed. So, you know, there's an issue, and now you're involved. So give us a sense of where we are today, Jeff, as far as, as, far as dealing with uh, what has become something of concern. Okay. First, I, I want to start by saying that uh, certainly we are aware of the frustration and concern that the people in Paulsboro are feeling. And certainly last night, uh, we were able to witness it firsthand. So it was very good for us to feel that uh, that anxiety and and uh, and that concern. Um, but it was important for us also to be there last night in order to get our message out. And that message is that we are working very hard in collaboration with the NJDEP and also the Paulsboro officials and Paulsboro Water Department to implement our four-part strategy to take care of the water quality concerns in well number seven. That four-part uh, plan includes First, we're working with the NJDEP to develop a, a, a comprehensive work plan in order to investigate uh, the community around our plant. The second part of our plan involves actually going out and taking samples of the drinking water in the community around our plant, including Paulsboro. So we've actually began taking those samples before we even finish working the work plan. Third part of our strategy actually involves more Paulsboro, the Paulsboro officials, and their water department trying to get wells number eight and nine, solving the radium problem on, that, uh, on those wells and getting them back in service as quickly as possible so that they can begin supplying the water for Paulsboro. And then taking well number seven offline so that we can look for different options in order to solve and improve the water quality on well number seven. And to do that, we've hired a, a, a technical expert, a water uh, treatment expert, to actually uh, develop a feasibility study to investigate the different options that uh, we can use to improve the water quality in Paulsboro for, for the entire system. And so um, we've actually, in the process of finishing that feasibility study up, and we will be presenting those options to the Paulsboro officials. Uh, within a matter of days or, or weeks, uh, depending on how it works. And then we're going to work together in order to implement a solution. That solution is going to be uh, dictated by the Paulsboro officials, how quickly we can get a, uh, an agreement in place so that we can move forward with that uh, implementing those solutions. So we're looking forward to a, a timely uh, a timely a resolution of this problem. And that was that was a question asked last night and one I like to ask just for those viewing. So uh, this is something will happen in, a, I mean, these steps are happening as we speak, 
but the uh, the understanding of the approach will happen sooner than later. We're, you're not talking months and years here. No, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, um, we are in the process now of working with our uh, our uh, technical expert in order to uh, basically put the options in a more presentable format, and then uh, we'll be moving forward with that in a matter of days or possibly a week or two at the most, and then uh, we'll move forward from there. And we're going to follow up in a later part of the show. Eric Bierman is going to join us uh, from Sickles. He's the municipal water engineer, and he'll talk to us about the timetable to get well number, the new wells, eight and nine, back online. And that way, uh, that way that well number seven uh, can be set aside and put in deep reserve while a fix is, is decided for that particular well. Jeff, Fred is signaling us that this segment, uh, it goes very quickly. You're worried about how much yeah. time it would take. It, go, it goes very quickly. Uh, but uh, I want to say to you that, uh, and for, for people listening, um, it's not certain that you're 100% responsible for this issue taking place, but you are 100% engaged. And I say that not to be patronizing because I'm standing here, but being in the meetings with mayor and council, this has to be fixed. And this would not be able to be fixed without this, uh, without this cooperation is taking place. Yeah, it is important for me to say that uh, certainly our actions is not an admission of fault or liability, but rather motivated from our values. So it's important that we say that. I agree. Thank you. And, and, and that's an important statement to make. All those things will be sorted out later on. The most important thing now is to ensuring good water. And by the way, the experience taking place in Paul's Rose Well number seven will likely be applied in other circumstances because this aquifer is shared by, by many wells. So this, uh, this is just the first step in, uh, in a new phase of what we treat water for. Uh, stay with us. We're coming right back. Life is a journey that we travel with a lot of uncertainty. When your family is faced with change and you're in need of understanding, direction, honesty, and professionalism, we at the Landoffy Funeral Home have a tradition of assisting you with all of your needs in any way that we can. We offer many affordable funeral services. Please feel free to call us with any questions you may have or visit us at www.landoffyfuneralhome.com. Rizzo Family Chiropractic Center in Gibstown offers pain relief with a difference. Using specific chiropractic adjustments, Rizzo Family Chiropractic will get to the root of your problem quickly. Bring your headaches, neck, back, joint, or limb pain to Dr. Karen Rizzo. If you have recurring pain, chiropractic can help. Rizzo Family Chiropractic can relieve many sources of pain without extended treatment and ongoing therapy. Give your family the gift of caring professional pain relief with a difference. Rizzo Family Chiropractic. And welcome back. Our program continues here on site at the Solvay plant in West Stefford. We now visit with Fred Sickles. He is an employee. He works for our Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, he, too, was at last night's meeting at the high school, answered and fielded a lot of questions. Uh, and again, we wanted to, this program, to some extent, is a repeat of last night, but the audio may be a little bit better. And if you could make it, we hope you can pick up some information. So, Fred, we just visited with the Jeff, the plant manager, got a little bit of overview because many people don't even know what this plant does. Mm -hmm. uh, now, from the DEP standpoint, Maybe you can give us a sense of where we are timing-wise, level of cooperation, and where the department sees the process at this moment. Okay, well, we continue to look at the uh, situation, do a, an evaluation of uh, um, the health of effects. Uh, we're looking, working with Solvay on the distribution of where it may have gone and what water systems uh, may be affected. Our primary goal is to um, make sure that we address the water systems first and foremost, but then do an analysis of everything from the private wells uh, that may be in the area or other water systems. We're uh, looking at the data, the human health data, as we said last night, that continues. It's been continuing for um, some time. The PFNA issue is a rather recent emerging issue that we're still evaluating with the health risks war from that. Um, we're working closely with our site remediation program, our water uh, supply program, working with Paulsboro and Solve on uh, solutions. Um, I'm very confident that uh, in a very short while, um, the department will be in a position to uh, uh, offer an action plan um, to get this out of the water um, as much as we can and uh, return, make sure that people in Paulsboro and the rest of the state have safe drinking water. So that's where we are. And I, I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. And, and I, I share that optimism based on based on what we're hearing in meetings associated uh, with both the department, Department of Health, Solvay, and and our water department and our engineer. And uh, you know, as, as you think through this, this aquifer serves a great deal of people. So it just so happens that Paulsburg's well number seven has the highest hit as far as numbers go. But I guess whatever is determined to be working and that will work here 
will be available if necessary in other places if this should pop up again. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent certain what strategy they'll they'll uh, select to resolve the issue. But yeah, carbon treatment has been shown to work very well uh, to remove this down to where you can't detect it anymore. Um, so I'd be confident that if we installed that type of system here, we would get uh, uh, great results. Uh, same thing around the state. And if you if you uh, carbon was a solution. Um, you're going to remove other things too. So it's not that you're just taking the PFCs out of the water, you're uh, removing a lot of other things too. So the, at the end of it, the water quality could be better than um, certainly at the beginning. Well, it, it's, it's certainly a set of circumstances that was not anticipated by anyone, especially the borough having made the new investment, the big investment in, in the new wells and the new, new water filtration system. But uh, as I remind everybody, generally speaking, the water from this aquifer is not drinkable as you pump it from the ground. We're always treating and filtering for something, whether it's iron, whether it's radium, whether it's levels of salt. Uh, am I saying that correctly, Fred? I mean, a lot of times you, you, we're always filtering for something. Yeah, I mean, there are very few aquifers in the state where you're, you're able to take it out of the ground and use it directly. Um, most have some sort of treatment, like you were saying, for iron. Um, certainly with the... Uh, Sodium in some of the places we have, we have some saltwater intrusion, so that has to be treated. So yeah, it's it's around the state. There's always some level of treatment. Groundwater is a lot easier to treat than surface water, though, um, just because of the nature. It tends to be cleaner as far as particulates. So um, every groundwater source really needs some level of treatment, and we certainly monitor all of them to make sure if there is no treatment, we know the quality, and if sometime in the future treatment's needed, we know how to um, inst install that. Yeah. And as we close this segment, uh, from the department standpoint, if you're able to comment. Uh, uh, how would you evaluate the level, the working level of cooperation between all parties? Well, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm really satisfied. Um, you know, people have stepped up. I think, you know, Paulsboro has uh, stepped up to, to accept some assistance and certainly want to resolve the problem. Uh, Solve has uh, made commitments to make sure that the, uh, the, the, the health of the people in the area are protected. Um, you know, we, as a regulatory agency, I have to sort of be the referee and push people oh, yes. to where we, they have to go. But right now, it's been a very uh, cooperative uh, arrangement, and I'm, I'm satisfied with how it's proceeding. Very good. And that's a very important uh, note to end this segment on because, as I mentioned when Jeff was on, there's a problem. It's got to be resolved. Uh, a lot of the other details associated with how, why, and when will be sorted out uh, after we uh, are uh, comfortable that the drinking water is returned back to a level that everyone can be, uh, to be can consume safely and without any apprehension. So that's the goal. We're going to come right back. Multi-policy discount. Paperless discount. Paid in full discount. Homeowners discount. Safe driver discount. Chipmunk family reunion. Someone stole the nuts. Squirrel jail. Justice. Countless discounts. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. Thinking about a new appliance or an LCD TV? Don't think twice, think Weiss. Weiss True Value has a full line of LCD TVs plus a great variety of appliances. And of course, hardware items like True Test Paints, Master Mechanic Tools, Electrical Supplies, Key Duplicating, and Rug Doctor Rentals. And for repairs on screens and windows, look no further. Weiss True Value, from making keys to selling appliances and LCD TVs. Don't think twice, think Weiss. 39 West Broad Street, Paulsboro. For everything, there's a season, and a time for everything under heaven. A time for sharing, a time for caring, a time for remembering, and a time for parting. When that time arrives, let Beth McBride Foley and Thomas D. Foley at the McBride Foley Funeral Home help you in your time of need. Offering a wide variety of funeral services from cremation to traditional, McBride Foley Funeral Home has been helping families with the loss of a loved one with over 50 years of combined service. McBride Foley Funeral Home, 228 West Broad Street, Paulsboro. Welcome back. The program continues. This is a single topic program, almost, because the chief of police is going to join us after Eric finishes. Uh, we're now going to round out this discussion. We started, uh, we're, we're here at Salve. We started with Jeff talking about the plant and their commitment to get things resolved. Uh, DEP has visited with us now. Eric, from the, uh, who you've been on the show before, but if you don't know Eric, he works for Sickles and Associates, not related to Fred Sickles, who was just on. They're the municipal engineering firm for the water system in Paulsboro. Uh, Eric, you're losing your hair over this. <laughs> I, that's probably a little contributing factor, yes. 
Um, this is the this this has been circumstances I mentioned that was not expected. Uh, more importantly, in this process, because clearly, as we understand it, a filtration system will at some point be put on well number seven, which uh, of course was thought to be the reserve well based on the new wells. And you're presently working to fine tune the filtration system at the new wells to handle uh, the level of radium that you were dealing with. So. I guess the most important thing, the first step that will help solve the and ease this will be the new well coming back, right? That's right. The, when the new wells come back online, that will that'll allow us to take seven offline. Um, right now, we're, we're shut down at wells eight and nine. Um, with that shutdown, we're act actively working on making uh, improvements to the chemical feed system to add uh, some additional uh, um, uh, additives to the water to help precipitate out the radium. It, basically, the preci precipitation removes the radium, it filters it out, um, and then uh, we'll be able to use the water after that. So, And again, radium is naturally occurring, and it was known that radium was in that well. Radium is in a lot of places. This plant was designed to handle that, and as the plant worked and came online, and uh, it turned out that it, it, the filtration system, if I'm saying it correctly, uh, needed to be more more pronounced for the radium issue. It wasn't filtering correctly. That's right. We were still removing radium. We just weren't doing it the, at the amount that we needed to. So um, we went back to the drawing board with Hunger Friend Terry, the system designer for the for the filtration system, and uh, they made some recommendation to recommendations to us and we're adding a potassium permanganate feed and a manganese sulfate feed and and uh, those should provide the um, the necessary uh, elements for the radium to attach to which would allow it to precipitate and be filtered and uh, what, what, what's your estimate I know last night you, you speculated somewhat I thought you gave a very conservative potential target date to get that done but how, how do you feel about that I'm still giving the conservative uh, estimate. It's still about where we thought it would be. We're on task uh, with the contractors that we have on board. We've got the mixers delivered. Uh, we've got the pumps that are anticipated to be delivered next week. Um, and we anticipate having uh, the installation contractor start working on it as soon as all the equipment's there. And as I suggested, they should work around the clock. And how long on the radium test, once you get back up and running, how long do you have to run before you can be certain that the new process is effective? That's actually something that we need to work out with the Department of, Our of Environmental Protection. Um, I've been having some early discussions with them as far as when we bring the plant back online, exactly how we have to do that. Uh, but we want to make sure that we're following the guidelines that they want to want to make sure that they see all the all the correct information that we're uh, obtaining the right samples for them. Very good. Never uncomplicated, folks. And just our luck in town. We have a train fall off the tracks, and out of nowhere, as this happens, it comes. But, you know, you deal with these things. And for all who are in this region whose water is supplied out of this aquifer, uh, this is a discussion that may come your way. And what is determined to be effective here in Paulsburg can be applied faster in other spots as things unfold. So uh, we just have to get through it. And uh, I'd like to think, are we closer to the end than the beginning? We're definitely closer to the end than the be beginning, sure. Sounds like it has to do with my hairline. Uh, we're going to come right back on a visit with the Chief of Police. Stay with us. Life is a journey that we travel with a lot of uncertainty. When your family is faced with change and you're in need of understanding, direction, honesty, and professionalism, we at the Landoffy Funeral Home have a tradition of assisting you with all of your needs in any way that we can. We offer many affordable funeral services. Please feel free to call us with any questions you may have or visit us at www.LandoffiFuneralHome.com. Rizzo Family Chiropractic Center in Gibstown offers pain relief with a difference. Using specific chiropractic adjustments, Rizzo Family Chiropractic will get to the root of your problem quickly. Bring your headaches, neck, back, joint, or limb pain to Dr. Karen Rizzo. If you have recurring pain, chiropractic can help. Rizzo Family Chiropractic can relieve many sources of pain without extended treatment and ongoing therapy. Give your family the gift of caring professional pain relief with a difference. Rizzo Family Chiropractic. We're going to close out the show on a different note. Uh, filling in for Irma Stevenson is Chief Chris Wachter of the Paulsburg Police Department, although he's not going to read birthdays. And, you know, I've said all along as we deal with this water issue, uh, it, mix, it still mixes very well with scotch, uh, no, matter the, uh, no matter what the extra additive is. I can say that from personal experience. But then again, I don't think I, don't think I use a lot of water when it comes to, to, uh, 
to that, so maybe, maybe that's not a fair assessment. But on a more serious note, uh, for those who travel through town, uh, recently traffic patterns have changed. Uh, the department's been very proactive. There are new stop signs on Mantua Avenue and Thompson Avenue. They used to be straight thoroughfares and almost like drag races. So, Chief, why don't you start us there because the department continues to take, take uh, steps ahead of things. Yes, we decided that... Uh over the years, we got a lot of complaints about the traffic on Mancha Avenue, Thompson Avenue, and Swedesboro. Some people say just because of speeding, but there's other issues. Uh, cars getting hit, parked vehicles, kids in the area. So we were worried about the safety. Um, so we just we came up with a plan. And we presented the mayor and council. We added some stop signs and strategic locations to help not just deal with some of the traffic flow as far as speeding and all that, but to deal with the safety, to get everybody to pay more attention to what's going on around them and uh, you know, be more aware of their surroundings. Sort of caught me by surprise, although I knew it was happening. That people seem to be adhering to it. Can you tell from monitoring if people started to realize it's there? Because these are neighborhoods, but Mancho Avenue can be a thoroughfare. Yeah, it's not just Mancho Avenue. Thompson Avenue is actually the, the more of the concern because it is a long straight run. Um, and there are so many kids that play in, and live in that area and play in that area. You have apartment complex on one side, you have the elementary school on the other. So, you know, it was a little tough in the beginning. We had a 30-day stand down where we actually extended it out to 45 days to get people more accustomed to the changes in the traffic because it, it, it is a big change. You know, it's, you know, it just can't happen overnight. Uh, but we found that the public feedback has been phenomenal. Um, the residents in the area, more so than not, are in favor of it. Um, and there was even consideration for Thompson Avenue adding another intersection as well. Very good. Uh, we've tackled a lot of issues with this program, uh, and so it's time for a little bit of good news. Um, and uh, you were saying as we were coming in from a crime statistics standpoint, the general performance of the department you've been pleased with. Very pleased. 2013, we saw a good reduction in overall crime, burglaries, things of that nature, um, which for us is, is showing that we're being more proactive. We're getting out of the community more. Solvability has been much higher. Arrests have been up. Um, complaints against officers and everything have been way down. So we're starting to see a change within the department. I credit my sergeants and my captain with that. Things are moving forward, and we're really starting to be progressive. And we, that's what my whole goal was as chief. Well, and you continue. I mean, uh, I, I think there's, there's, there's real progress, and, and that's something that we'd like to talk about, especially in light of handling these other issues. You mentioned bikes back for the summer, maybe? Yes, yeah, so you're going to see more officers on bicycle patrol. Um, we, we're working with New Jersey DOT uh, with Broad Street with the crosswalks. So when the weather changes, um, you're going to see new signage on Broad Street from Delaware going out past Pine Street. And that's really for the school crossings. Um, it's important that the, the uh, crossing guards have more visibility. Traffic slows down a little bit for them as the kids are crossing back and forth. So you're going to start to see little, little changes, little bits here and there. So. Very good. Thank you. Chief Walker visits with, with us, standing in for Irma Stevenson, uh, who will be back on the next program with birthdays. But thank you, Chief. Thank, thank you. you to the department as well. We're going to close the show from here for Fred Bookter behind the camera, for Bill Kane, our producer, who couldn't be here today. And let me close with this note. Uh, this water issue that we're contending with in Paulsboro is a serious issue. Uh, but I say to you uh, that all the, all the resources necessary to get it corrected are fully engaged. Mayor, council, Paulsboro Water Department, Eng Paulsboro Engineering Department, Department of Health, Department of Environmental Protection, and Solve are working diligently to put a fix in place, and one is in sight. The bad news is we have to deal with it. The good news is it's manageable, and it's going to get fixed. And uh, we have to just move on from there and, uh, and just continue to get strong. So that being said, as Irma would say, we'll see you on Broad Street. Until next time. <laughs>